In the fourth part of this series on the book of Revelation, we saw that after the sixth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9, a mighty angel came down with an open book. As the angel came down with the book, the seven thunders uttered some things, but John was not able to write it. Then John was told to go and take the book, and the angel told him to eat it. We then see the two witnesses that prophesied for 1260 days or 42 months. Then we saw the Antichrist, who knows what authority is given to him. He did not strike the witnesses until his time had been granted. He killed them in the same city where Yahshua was put to death. Then three and a half days later, they are resurrected and ascend to heaven, and their many enemies saw them. Then an earthquake happens, and 10% of Jerusalem was destroyed, and 7,000 people were killed. We also discuss the Revelation 12 sign of Revelation chapter 12. As we continue reading and get into the next chapter, John tells us about the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the mark of the beast. These are subjects that need to be discussed in isolation because of the many points that bring confusion with the masses. There have been many that comment on my videos that the Antichrist is not a specific person, but just a person that denies Yahshua as the Messiah. 1 John chapter 2 verse 22 says, Who is a liar, but he who denies that Yahshua is the Messiah? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. 1 John chapter 4 verse 3 says, And every spirit that does not confess that Yahshua, the Messiah, has come in the flesh, is not of Elohim. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. John who is also the writer of Revelation, speaks about the Antichrist in his letters, but he is not speaking of the coming world leader. He is talking about the spirit of the Antichrist, a spirit that we see many are possessed with today. And from those scriptures, it seems that so many just stay with that understanding because those scriptures are the only ones that say Antichrist. And I get it. That's understandable. The figure that we call the Antichrist is not a title that is given to him through scripture but one that has been placed upon him. So whether we choose to call him the Antichrist makes no difference, because it's not about his title, but about his role and actions. We just call him the Antichrist because he's anti-Yahshua, anti-Messiah. He will, of course, have the spirit of the Antichrist, though. But for people to say that there will be no Antichrist, or man of sin, or lawless one, or whatever else we'd like to refer to him as, that is a statement and or view that is an error. His role in what he does is spoken about many times in different books of the Bible. So those that like to say that there is no Antichrist, unless you are being technical because he is not referenced by the name as Antichrist, you're in error, and I will explain why in depth. Let's discuss this so that there can be a strong grasp of understanding for these end times. Let's begin. We start in Revelation chapter 13. It says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for forty-two months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim, to blaspheme his name his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, 
and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Revelation chapter 13. So, in the last video, part 4, I explained an important point that we all must have in our awareness when trying to understand the book of Revelation. There are two realms. There is the physical realm and a spiritual realm. There is the physical realm, which we all see very clearly, but we cannot see the spiritual realm with our physical eyes. What's important is that we understand that what happens in the physical world is often a result of what is happening in the spiritual realm. A lot of the imagery you are seeing in the book of Revelation is what is happening in the spiritual realm. And that's why the imagery can throw us off and confuse us. And that's why there can be so much debate about these chapters that we are going over. Because it's not clearly stated through events in the physical realm. It leaves it open to interpretation by various readers. I am in no way claiming my understanding to be superior. I am only teaching and displaying what I felt led to say and show. Revelation chapter 13 is a very important chapter and we need to break it down. This chapter is about the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the mark of the beast. In understanding this chapter, it's important to also read Daniel chapter 7 and bring in his dream and the interpretation of it because much of it correlates with Revelation 13. Verse 1 and 2 of chapter 13 says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. You see, John sees this beast coming up out of the sea. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel tells of a dream that he had in which he saw the rise and fall of four Gentile world empires. Each of the world empires were characterized as a beast coming from the sea of nations. Daniel chapter 7 verse 3 says, And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The sea that the beast is rising out of is the Gentile nations of the world. This is to say that the beast system and the Antichrist will not come from the Israelites. It will come from the Gentiles. The Antichrist is not from the original Hebrew Israelite bloodline. He is a counterfeit that comes from the Gentiles, though he will claim that he is from the bloodline of King David. Watch part 67 of my History of Religion series to understand why. Now, when reading this chapter, while also applying what we learn in Daniel chapter 7, while we also add in the explanation for the beast that is given in Revelation chapter 17, verses 8 through 13, we see that this beast is made up of a lot of kingdoms that have come up through world history. It's not just one. It has many different parts to it. So let's examine this beast. We already know he comes from the Gentile nations, but then he also has seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns, ten crowns. Do you remember in Revelation chapter 12, the dragon that's in verse 3? that verse 9 of that chapter refers to as Satan, he also has seven heads and ten horns. But the crowns are on the dragon's head, while the crowns are on the beast's horn. The dragon and the beast are similar, again, because it emphasizes that this beast comes from the power and authority that was given to Satan. Like verse 2 says, 
Now, according to Revelation chapter 17, the seven heads of the beast are identified as both mountains and as rulers, kings. The mountain is typically a symbol for a kingdom. The seven kingdoms could be the world empires over ancient history that brought us to the point in time we are at now. That would be Samaria, Egypt, Babylon, Greece, Persia, Rome, and the revived Roman Empire. You see, the thing though is that I really don't know. I've studied this extensively and reviewed others' research as well, and this could be correct or they could be something very different. I can't say for sure. What I do know is that in verse 2, we see the beast was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion, which aligns with the first three beasts of Daniel's vision in Daniel chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. This beast was complex, but in this beginning description, we are clearly talking about a world empire, a political system. Like I said in Daniel chapter 7, verses 4 through 6, he saw three beasts that were kings that rose up. He then saw a fourth beast that was different than the rest. This is found in verses 7 and 8. It says, After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. So we will get to this little horn in a second. I think you can see that that's the Antichrist. But what we're focusing on is that fourth beast that was different from them all. This dream of Daniel was interpreted, and verse 23 and 24 explains the fourth beast. It says, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. This fourth beast of Daniel and the beast that came out of the sea in Revelation 13 are the same. And like the scripture says, the dragon whom we know as Satan gave the beast its authority. As we understand what is going on in world events, we can clearly discern that this beast is the United Nations. There currently is an agenda that is calling for more control and governance by the United Nations. This is what we know to be the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 21. We have seen events like the Global Citizen Festival that shows that there is now an international government that the population are citizens of now. I speak about this in my video about 10 reasons that we're in the end times. But this is what the beast will be. It will be like a revived Roman Empire, which is why we see the Roman symbol of peace on the logo, the olive branch. But it will be like a revived Roman Empire because it will have one ruler, like an emperor, just like Rome did. They allowed the nations they conquered to keep their identity, just as long as they submitted to Rome. The United Nations will not be a conqueror, but it will be the nations of the world that will gladly surrender to one body of governance rather than having many world leaders that can provoke war and conflict. Hydra created a world so chaotic that humanity is finally ready to sacrifice its freedom to gain its security. Once the purification process is complete, Hydra's new world order will arise. The world will denounce the populist ideas of leaders like Donald Trump and unite under a common goal for the world and not place one country above the rest. This is part of the agenda that we can clearly see in effect that's using Donald Trump as a scapegoat that they're using to unite the world. In either case, the United Nations is a part of the complete symbolism of the beast found in Revelation chapter 13, and it's the fourth beast of Daniel 7, both the same. Its authority will be granted by Satan. So, as we continue on in the chapter of Revelation 13, the characteristics now are about a person and not a world empire, as they worship the beast. You do not worship a world empire. 
but all the people worship the beast, but they also worship Satan. That's according to Revelation 13, 4. The dragon is Satan, and we see that all the world worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast as well. This verse is explicitly explaining why we are being conditioned to accept satanic doctrine. The world is being prepared to worship the dragon, which is Satan. Verses 3 and 4 says that the world marveled after the beast. And then verse 5 says that he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and his authority was given for 42 months. Verse 7 says it was granted for him to make war with the saints. This is a man, like we see in Daniel chapter 7 with the little horn. Verses 24 and 25 explain it as, The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. We see that this little horn is the same as the beast in Revelation chapter 13. Verse 7 and 8 of the chapter says, Authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life. These verses clearly explain a man of sin that is given authority by Satan for a period of time. Go back in chapter 11 of Revelation. Verse 7 explains that the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against the two witnesses and kill them. This is the same beast. So when we see this first beast and combine it with Daniel chapter 7, along with other scriptures in the book of Revelation that also speak of the beast, it becomes a lot clearer of what the beast of Revelation is. We see the world empire and the little horn who is the ruler of it. The United Nations and Antichrist are the first beast of Revelation chapter 13. Continuing in chapter 13, we see another beast that had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon, meaning he spoke like Satan. He was given all the authority of the Antichrist when he was in his presence. He used the authority to cause the earth to worship the Antichrist. He performed great signs like fire coming down from heaven and used those signs to deceive the world. He caused those who would not worship the beast to be killed. This is who we know to be the false prophet of Revelation. He is given this label in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, when him and the Antichrist are thrown in the lake of fire. This role is an important one. The Antichrist would not be worshipped without the false prophet. We look so heavy into the Antichrist and who it is, but we don't think of the false prophet and he is the one that causes the worship of the Antichrist. The false prophet is in relation to the Antichrist as John the Baptist is in relation to Yahshua. He is paving the way for him. We see this role clearly being carried out by Pope Francis. He has been aggressively working to combine all religions of the world under the doctrine that we all worship the same God. And he is meeting with all the leaders of the many faiths in this world. La mayoría sabemos convivir nos resulta más fácil y es un mensaje, ¿no? Un mensaje de que tenemos el mismo padre en el cielo. El mismo padre acá también, Abraham. He even had an unprecedented historic meeting with his contemporary of the Eastern Orthodox Church the patriarch Kirill, and made a declaration that would bring unity between the two major churches. This has never been done before. He is actively promoting and setting the stage for the one world religion. Do you understand what the one world religion is? It's what I just described. All the religions believing they are worshiping the same God, but that God is actually the dragon who we know as Satan, and they are led to worship him through worshiping the beast who is the Antichrist. They are led to worship the beast by being led by the false prophet. You see, the Pope is not the Antichrist. He is not of the bloodline, and he is not being promoted as someone that the whole world will worship. He is promoted as the authority that will co-sign the Antichrist as the one who should be worshipped.
he is also the facilitator of the Mark of the Beast, which we must discuss as well. Verse 16 of chapter 13 says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now, we will end on this topic. There is a major belief that the mark of the beast is Sunday law. This doctrine was created by Ellen G. White of the denomination of Seventh-day Adventists. This doctrine is spoken of in her book, The Great Controversy, and it is a premise of doctrinal belief of all that are in the denomination of Seventh-day Adventists. It seems that everyone that's in this denomination says the same thing, and it's based around the belief that the mark of worshiping the Father is observing the Sabbath, and the mark of following Satan is worshiping on Sunday. This understanding is not a complete application of scripture, and this view leaves out a lot of other factors. This needs to be spoken of by itself. The thing is that if you follow this channel and review my videos, you will see a consistent theme of groups and denominations forming because of doctrine and traditions created by other individuals. This understanding and doctrine can often go along with their belief, meaning they believe the Bible, but they also follow and align themselves with doctrine and explanations of men. And this is what we find with the belief that the mark of the beast is Sunday law. This belief is easily debunked because it does not apply all the components of the scripture that they're talking about. The belief of the Seventh-day Adventists is that the mark is not a physical mark that can be seen, just like the seal of Elohim. But the scripture says no man may buy or sell without this mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The understanding of the Seventh-day Adventists leaves this part of the prophecy out. Their understanding is completely surrounded by the Sabbath, those that keep it and those that don't. But keeping Sunday law does not allow someone to buy or sell. If I don't keep Sunday law, how could the false prophet stop me from buying or selling? Everything must fit. The explanation that is given by the Seventh-day Adventists makes a lot of sense if they did not leave out important points like this. Being able to buy and sell is a major part of making it in this world. Where would you be without being able to buy or sell anything? Without this ability, there is no way for someone to live, to eat, and to work. So for the Seventh-day Adventists, while I understand that this is what you have been taught since you joined your denomination, you must live your faith through the expectation that all of your doctrine must completely align with scripture, not just parts of it. Because today, there are great signs that the mark of the beast is extremely possible the way it is written. There is no coincidence when there is technology that actually allows someone the ability to buy or sell while it's actually being implanted and inserted in someone's body. We should strongly be looking at this as the mark of the beast. There is an active campaign promoting an implantable RFID microchip that has many different functions, but one of them is allowing digital commerce transactions to exist. They are implanting the chip in people's hands. And now they are even showing the technology for the same thing to be implanted in our foreheads as well. All right, Elon Musk now talking up a brain implant technology that they just put this chip, I guess, into your skull. Uh, and then you just, I don't know what, what good it does, but it's there and then it follows you and tracks you. Then we also see a push to digitize money. Cryptocurrencies are a new currency that have only been around for a decade, but is now being promoted as the future of money, and countries are actively working to implement their own cryptocurrencies. Facebook is creating their own cryptocurrency to facilitate global payments, and many of the major businesses in the world are on board with them. There is even a call to digitize the United States dollar so that it could compete with cryptocurrencies. I made a video about Bitcoin and the mark of the beast that may provide you with more understanding on this topic. The point is, never in 2000 years since this prophecy was given have we seen the ability for this prophecy to literally be carried out and implemented. We can also see that this is a goal of the elite. They want us all microchipped. I cannot say for sure, 
because I obviously am not a psychic and cannot tell the future. But if you see the ability for Bible prophecy to literally be carried out before your eyes, you know that it's no coincidence. The technology and the ability to carry out the mark of the beast is here. Don't hold on to your own understanding based on someone else's writings over 150 years ago that's not applying all the scripture. Look at the evidence before your eyes. The false prophet will cause all to receive this mark. This is the future of this world and is being promoted before our eyes. They show it on the news. Media personalities talk about it. Breakthroughs. Turns out one of the biggest discoveries is actually this tiny. See how small that is? This little chip may be the next big thing, and it sounds like it's right from a sci-fi movie, but people all over the world are implanting these into their wrists. It's in our movies and television. It's everywhere. We are being conditioned to receive it, and they are just waiting for the right conditions to implement it. So wrapping it all up and putting it all together, we see that Revelation chapter 13 alludes to the beast. The beast is both a complete world empire along with the world ruler. We see this coming in formation with the United Nations. David Rockefeller, one of the founding members of the United Nations, you see, it was his family that donated the land that the United Nations is even on. In his memoir, he said, For more than a century, ideological extremists at either end of the political spectrum have seized upon well-publicized incidents such as my encounter with Castro to attack the Rockefeller family for the inordinate influence they claim we yield over American political and economic institutions. Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> he was proud of it, because he was working towards this goal of creating the beast system. This is why we see kids wearing shirts saying, Unleash the beast. This beast of revelations has been formed and cultivated for decades, and is now just waiting for the right crisis so that it can move into the dominance that it was created for, that also gives way for the beast himself which his number is 666. He will then take over and control the system so that there is no more populism. Donald Trump was put in office to completely put a bad taste in everyone's mouth around the world about nations putting their own needs above everyone else. His wall is just a metaphor of it all. That is why the Pope has spoken out against it. He wants to tear down walls. They want open borders. The only thing that you need to cross is your chip. This is what immigration reform in America is about. All of this may need to be explained in a separate video because there is so much more that can be said about it all. And I'm getting off track. The point is that the beast is the United Nations in power along with the Antichrist that will control it. The false prophet is given power in the presence of the beast and he will promote the worship of the beast and everyone that is not with the father will accept the mark of the beast which right now seems to be a microchip that will work with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. This is Revelation chapter 13 in real life for you. Things that seemed crazy 30 years ago are actual things of our current age. This is not science fiction. The stage is completely set for it. What you must do is make sure that you are not aligned with it. Make sure that you are dedicating your life to the Messiah. Make sure that you are following his ways and commands and letting the Holy Spirit take the lead in your life. Read your Bible like your life depends on it, because it actually does. You want to be written in the book of life. I see the Father calling so many to him, performing miracles in the lives of many, calling people to him for repentance. I've had family that has had remarkable breakthroughs in the relationship with him in a short period of time because of the urgency of this moment. I've had a brother-in-law recently get baptized that I thought honestly was on the side of the devil, and now he wants to follow Yahshua. The Father is awesome. The Father is calling us towards repentance. He wants us to be ready for Him and to accept Him and His Son because time is almost up. This video has illustrated to you that Revelation chapter 13 is here. The technology and infrastructure are there. 
They are only waiting on the right crisis and, of course, the authority of the Father to continue. When the Holy Spirit is taken away, everything changes. If you are watching this, please take this seriously. Repent. If you do not know where to start, please watch some of my videos. Start at part one of the History Religion series and watch it all the way through. It is not acceptable for you to put your spiritual needs as a second, third, or fourth priority. Your spiritual needs must be the priority over everything else. You must submit to the Father. You must repent. You must be born again. You must read your Bible. You must be led by His Holy Spirit. You must be ready. Make sure that you are. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank all who support this ministry. Your contributions truly bless me and make a huge difference for this ministry. I'm truly thankful for your love and support. Thank you for listening to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. I love you all.